So this is all we need in order to tell Composer that we want to download the Doctrine Inflector package. We want it to be version 1.0 with the latest patches applied. Composer then goes out to Packages and takes a look at the library and sees what it needs to download in order to support it. Some of these packages are single classes, but a lot of them operate with dependencies on other classes and even other projects. But Composer takes care of downloading all of those dependencies as well, which makes it incredibly powerful and much less error prone than if you were doing it manually. So now if we jump back to our file browser, now you may remember the vendor folder from our previous examples. This is where we stuck all of our third-party code. And that's exactly what Composer does as well. Now let's take a look at how these folders are structured. So here's our Doctrine folder, and we should expect there to be some inflector library, probably a class, inside of here. And you can see it all the way down here. What the inflector library does, not to give too much away, it takes a singular word, and makes it plural, or the other way around. I chose this library because it's fairly simple to use, it stands alone, you can use it in virtually any project, and it's a lot of fun to look at the code, because you get to see the weirdness of the English language, how moose doesn't get pluralized, and a whole slew of other exceptions to the basic rules of adding an S or an ES. Anyway, if we open up this file, and we take a look at the namespace, you see it's Doctrine, Common, Inflector. And if we jump back to the file browser, we'll see that same folder structure listed out here, Doctrine, Common, Inflector. You'll recognize this from the PSR0 standard so that we can use auto-loading with this library. Again, all of this code lands in the lib folder, which is what the auto-loader looks for in order to determine where to seek out a particular class. And you see it also has a composer.json file. Now this file is the same exact structure as the one that we used in order to include Doctrine in our project. And if Doctrine had any dependencies, they would show up in this composer.json file. If we open up the file, we'll see several more attributes used than what we used originally. It includes a lot of metadata about the package, which Packages uses in order to categorize and present this package. It has a require just like we did before and it's simply listing out a minimum PHP version in order for this library to be used. We'll come back to this autoload structure, but just at a glance, you probably get a sense of what's going on here. We're setting a PSR0 standard for our autoloading, and we're mapping a namespace to a folder. 